What's up, guys? Welcome to Talking to Fans, episode 13. Before you get into this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, we do baseball content and Talking to Fans, which is a series of podcasts where I talk to fans about the game of baseball. So let's get into this. Today's guest is Coach Perry. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? What's up, Kate? Thanks for having me on, dude. Appreciate it. Yo, no problem. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to talk about the topic. Um, Ryan Jeffers, like, if you could give another opinion, because you did a video, but if you could give another opinion on here, then what do you got? Um, it's heartbreaking. Um, you, you hate to see and hear about things like that that happen in, in, in not just baseball, but just in, in sport and in life in general. Um, but it's, you know, it's an important reminder to keep in check with your mental health. Um, yeah. I think you said it best in your video and I tried to portray it in my video. It's like, we're a priority. You as a human being, as a person, is a priority first um, before any type of, you know, accolade you ever have playing a sport or anything in school. Like, you're a person first. And when you, when you really reflect on it, um, the whole situation and other situations in the past, it's like you really got to be grateful for what you have. And um, it gives you a different perspective on life going forward. But I think just focusing on yourself, if you're not mentally there, being able to have somebody to talk to um, is, is important. It's really important. So that's just kind of a brief take on that. Uh, I mean, it's just it's sad to even think about, but it's something that's important um, for especially younger players out there. So uh, if you're listening, if you ever need someone to lean on or talk to find find that somebody it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to feel sad it's okay to not be okay and i think that overall theme should stick with you the rest of your life so yeah i think you said it best there um so like what made you start like wanting to become a baseball coach at first um i didn't always want to be a baseball coach uh, it was never my like original plan it kind of just happened um, so like after I stopped playing, um, playing the you know, as a, as a player myself, like just being in the game. And then after I quit, I didn't really know what to do or with my life, you know, how to navigate anything. And, um, I found passion back in baseball and it was just, it landed a coaching job with like 13, 14, 15 year old kids. And it's been an awesome experience. I've been working there for a little bit over a year, uh, a little bit over a year now. So definitely got some experience with that. And it's just, uh, it's been humbling to know that, like, after I quit baseball, lost my passion a bit, and then I gained, I regained that passion through coaching. So I, I enjoy every second of coaching. I love working with kids. I love working with players. So uh, yeah, I, I wasn't, it wasn't original, original plan at all. So awesome and you're were on the live stream around the diamond the other night and played jack jackson olsen how is that because we all know he's like up there yeah um jackson's a great dude uh i was i would took i lost i was a little upset that i lost it's all right though um, yeah but jackson's a real good dude he's, he's killing it and i'm sure he's got you know a lot of big things happening in the future and that just goes to show too what I was, you know, talking about before is the brief understanding of his story is that I have of his story is, you know, he, he was playing at a fifth year, um, then was like just gonna do regular life, adult life after college, after having that fifth year, because he didn't have the opportunity to play professionally, and then he started making videos, and now he's part of the MLB career class and a big part of it, so, um, just goes, it's funny to show that uh, even when the passion of baseball, playing baseball wasn't there um, anymore because it was not possible, baseball has a funny way of finding itself back into uh, other people's lives um, for, the, for the greater good. So it's, it's awesome to see. He's a great dude. 
Yeah. And speaking of what you just said, baseball, like, baseball finds yourself. It, yeah. It's why you love this game, honestly. It's why I love it. Yeah. I think um, I always say that baseball is a great teacher for life. Um, a lot of experiences that you're going to have playing baseball, especially because you fail a lot more than you succeed. Um, you learn a lot by yourself as a person. You develop work ethic, develop discipline. You have to figure out how to motivate yourself when you don't want to do stuff, um, especially if you love a game and you want to pursue it as much as long as possible. Um, if you just like play baseball for fun, like that's cool. But like if you're serious about your development as a player and want to take it up to the next level, those lessons you learn along the way when you're you know twelve, like ten to yeah, ten to like through high school and honestly through college too. Um, those lessons you learn, you'll take, you'll carry on the rest of your life. So, like when you're applying for a job in the future, when you, you know, have down the road, you know, a marriage and some and wife and kids and a family, those principles that you've learned in baseball don't leave you. They don't leave you at all. Um, so I always talk about. I mean, that's really for any sport. I just saw baseball specifically because, you know, we're related to baseball. So, but it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, and. Like, what started getting you into motivating you to make TikToks and what you do? Um, I, I honestly don't know. It was I was just kind of posting videos for fun uh, from the jump, just non non motivation, non baseball related. Uh, I got an urge to start making like mental game, you know, videos. Um, it wasn't until like I, I had a bunch of tries until I actually had one. I had one video, you know, get a lot of traction, about like 300 something thousand views and likes and a bunch of shares. And it was like, that was kind of what I needed to push me to keep making videos after that first one. Um, because I realized that it wasn't like, like sure, it was cool to go, vi- like go viral and, and get that traction and gain followers. But like, that made me, that showed me that my one video had a, an impact on not just one person, but thousands. And if that's just like awesome, that TikTok's a platform, you can do that. Um, even if I just made one video and help out one person, that's great. But just like the fact that, and the love and the support that I got from the one video, then it turned to two videos, then to three videos, um, that really did well. Uh, just to love and support, and then like the feedback that I got because I, I, I just want to make it for the, for the kids consuming it um, and to be that other voice that they need when they, whenever they need um, to hear. Yeah, and I think we all as baseball creators know what our job is it's to promote the game. And yeah, yeah, you 100%. do a good job of that. Yes, yeah, I appreciate that. You, I mean, you're still, you do your crushing it. Yeah. Again, I appreciate it, so. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I actually wanted to tell a story real quick about myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was on Baseball Dad's live. I know you know who that is. Yeah. A.A. Run and Joshy, like, were fielding and hitting. And MLB went into live. Everybody started acting crazy and everything. And MLB responded to some of my comments actually. Really? Yeah. Like I was just joking around and I said future kid in the MLB creator class and and they like gave the eye emoji like you know the one like where you're watching the person? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they gave that emoji to me one time and I said some other stuff too. And value to that so that's awesome you should definitely keep trying for that yeah i'm i'm gonna keep grinding and we'll see yeah 100 percent. that's awesome so so you're a yankees fan and what yeah. started making you get into the yankees and wanting to watch their team every day uh, it's tough i've just been a yankees fan my whole life ever since i was little uh i was kind of born just kind of born into being a Yankees fan. I think as I got older, and especially now, that I'm just like appreciative of baseball as a game itself. 
I could honestly say that I'm a Yankees fan for sure. I'll go to Yankees games because I'm close by, but I'm just a baseball fan in general. So any sort of high competition in baseball, I love. Um, but I was, again, I was a Yankees fan from, from the from a jump when I was, when I got really got into baseball, like five, six years old, going to games, meeting players, getting autographs, stuff like that. It's awesome. And, um, I just wanted to ask you this, like describe where you were when they won the World Series, and I think it was 2009. Oh, man. Um, pretty sure I was at my uncle's house. We were watching it at my uncle's house. My uncle was a big Yankees fan. He would always bring us to, to the uh, to the new old stadium, I think it was at the time. Um, and it was awesome. It, I mean, it, it was uh, it's a vague, it's a vague and distant memory, but I remember just like I had a Yankees hat on. I had a Marion Rivera jersey. And I took the hat, I took, threw the hat up in the air when once they got the last out. Um, so yeah, it was awesome. And, I mean, I wish I wish it was a recent memory because uh, you know they haven't won in a while. But what are you gonna do? Um, but then I'll flip I'll flip the script on you then and ask you <laughs> what what happened when the, when the Braves won this year. So I did a vlog, and for everyone who watched it, I was at Truist Park in the Infinity Club, which is like the 200s, like 200s behind home yeah. plate. Me and my dad and a couple friends from his work, we all went down there that night, and it was just crazy. And if you watched the vlog and if you watched a video, maybe even two videos, because I may have posted two videos just on my reaction, it was awesome. I love the Braves. The awesome and the awesome thing is, I'm not going to be too greedy, but we're a young team and we can do it again. Yeah, 100%. I want to see you guys do it again. You guys haven't won in a while, so. Um, and I think even with the, I mean, you guys, you guys have to. I saw a lot of them are like free agents, so you have to, have to sign those guys back up, and then hopefully get a healthy Acuna, healthy um, who's the other guy. Soroka. Oh, uh, Soroka. I mean, Soroka's legit, too, man. Like, you guys lost him. I think Ian Anderson could be a little more polished, uh, with a little more experience, um, with a better experience under his belt. Max Freed, stud. And then, I don't know this whole thing with Charlie Morgan, if you guys are going to resign him, but hopefully he gets healthy, too. Yeah, I hope, I hope Soroka is going to get healthy. I mean, I heard he injured, or he retore his Achilles just walking yeah. into the clubhouse. That, yeah, that's tough. That's brutal. That's yeah, that's brutal. But we all know baseball is a funny sport, so yeah, he yep. he could have a comeback season next year. Same with Ronald Acuna. Yeah, I hope I hope Acuna does, man. He's he's something special. But yeah, he's something special, like. Shohei Otani, Vladimir Guerrero, Fernando Tatis. He's among those guys as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think if he was healthy, and obviously didn't get hurt, he would have made a case for MVP. I think so. He would have made a clear definitive cut MVP. I think. I think he probably could have won it, maybe. like He, he was yeah. having a really good season, then he went down to Miami and it was all bad from there. Yeah, I think so too. So let's stay on the Miami topic real quick. Um, you yeah. you're telling me you're texting to me. You went to a game in Miami where the Braves were playing in August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I got I got a condo in Fort Myers, which is about two hours out from Miami. So we took a trip, my dad and I, um, and they ironically were playing the Braves. And I was, you know, it was the first time in that Miami Stadium, Lone Depot. It was awesome. Like, it was, it was in, I think it was in, I don't know if they had the roof on, but it was, like, cold. It was, and it was, like, it was, like, super cold in there. It was the AC, air conditioned. And uh, um, I was just walking around the stadium, checking everything out, watching it. And then I posted a video of, like, the Braves. It was, uh, you know, uh, um, yeah. warming up, doing some stuff. 
I saw a couple, a couple other dudes like warming up. So it was, it was it was cool to see. And then Austin Riley went deep. Like Austin Riley was like man. So like he went deep, and then I was there. It was awesome. The Braves did they win? Oh uh, yeah. Mean, we left in the we left in the ninth, and I or in the eighth, and I think it was like a it was like a, it was the most boring game ever, low key, because it was like zero zero through like eight because like the pitchers were just dealing, the guys weren't hitting, so it was like one of the pitchers battle type of game until Austin Riley hit a home run or something like that. And then, um, yeah. So he left a little early. I saw Austin Riley's home run. And, I and Riley's homer was in the ninth. Yeah, so, like, we left right after that. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Braves didn't win that game. I did, yeah. Yeah. They must have won, like, one nothing. Or, like, 2 nothing, I think. 2 nothing. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly a big Braves fan. Now that I'm thinking about it. Like I used to watch Dansby um, when um, he was in had a Vanderbilt. Like I used to watch him all the time. So I'm very and, and Walker Bueller. I don't know, Walker Bueller. Something. Walker Bueller was on his team when they played together. in Dandy. I love Walker Bueller too, but he's on the Dodgers. Yep. And let's just stay on the college thing again, but move to UCLA for a minute. Max Freed, Trevor Bauer. Garrett Cole and Jack Flaherty were in that same rotation. That's Absolutely, it's honestly it's a scary thing about like I can't imagine a rotation like that. I can't imagine a rotation like that. I, I'm I'm um like eighty five percent sure Trevor Bauer and Garrett Cole don't like each other. They don't. I think yeah. something happened when they were at UCLA and they don't really yeah. talk much. Yeah. I think Garrett was there a year. Garrett, Garrett's older, and I think Bauer must have. Been, I don't know, dude. I think it was a year year difference, but Bauer definitely did. Something. It was definitely Bauer's fault. Like there was no way it was Garrett's fault. Like, the way Bauer, you know, how Bauer's person how he is. Yeah. I love Bauer and, and what he does for the game, but um, he definitely did something like screwed up with the girl or something like that. I think so. I definitely agree. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that that rotation is scary. That rotation is scary. I can't imagine being on USC, like, again, playing against them and just seeing those four freaking studs. Yeah, I. it would not be fun. No, not at all. Alright, who is the creator that kind of expi- inspired you to make your content, if there is one? Um, probably my, my roommate. My, um, my roommate Nikki Cass, he's like my best friend. He he kind of he, he does baseball videos, but it's more it's mainly like Italian dad, Italian type of videos, Italian culture. Um, so he started making videos during the quarantine when I was kind of writing my book, and then he kind of he blew up, went viral a bunch of times, got posted on Barstool. Um, trillions of times was on the partial podcast like he just kind of grew and grew and grew and grew and he would always help me try to get an idea you know or help me navigate the whole content making process because obviously it's more natural for him to do because he's a funny dude like it's one thing to make like funny videos and stuff but then it's another thing to like talk about something serious in front of the camera um that's right to help people but like so he would be one of inspiration for sure um Trying to think of another one. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I honestly stopped, um, not stopped, but I, I've been trying to limit my, like, consume. Like, I try to limit the, how much time I consume videos as opposed to just creating them. Um, I'm more, I used to consume a lot to try to, like, figure out what I got to do to make a good video, or what I got to say to make the right video. But then I'd start to get into the mindset of like, let me just create as many videos as possible, see what works, see what doesn't, and then go from there. And then like keep learning every video. Exactly, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, because I've been there as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just about creating and kind of tweaking what works, tweaking what doesn't. And then um, so tweaking, tweaking what works and then throwing out what doesn't work. I think that's a big part of the creation process. But I'm still struggling learning with that so i'm definitely not perfect with that no same here but yeah 
All right, so you went to a game and you saw Zach Campbell. Did you talk? Did you get to talk to him? Because I don't, I don't know. I feel like you said that, but I'm not sure. No, I went to the Yankees game a couple months ago, um, and we were, like, we were about to like go down the stairs, and we saw Zach like taking a picture with fans, and we're like, "Yo, Zach, what's up?" We literally shook his hand and like just. Left, like we didn't have any. It was, cause we were trying to get out of there. We the yeah, Bronx. it's the Bronx. So um, we just shook his hand. And that was it. Like I, I think I don't know a bunch about Zach Campbell. I'm still confused how he man he just catches out all those balls and stuff. But I know. I think um, yeah, that's really all I gotta say about him. Yeah, he's one of the creators that has kind of inspired me to be where I am. I got a lot. Like, yeah. I, I get... Yeah. So have you, have you seen him before? So, I actually went to the same game as him, and I was maybe about 10 rows ahead of him and didn't realize it. Oh, oh really? So you yeah. Didn't talk to him? I didn't get to talk to him because I didn't know he was there. But... It was um 2018, and the Marlins are the popular team in the Talking to the Fans today. They were playing the Marlins. Okay. In, in, in Atlanta? Yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah, he's all over the place, right? I think he just travels and goes to, game and just goes to baseball games. I wonder what he does in the offseason. So, I heard, like, his mom, his family has a bookstore, and I think he works at that bookstore, I'm pretty sure. He just works at a bookstore in the offseason? I think so, yeah. And then in, in, in the spring and the summer, he just collects baseballs and makes content. Yeah, well, whatever works for him, it's for sure. awesome to watch it. and He's probably making a lot of money, too. Doing that. I would... I mean, yeah, because he spends a lot going to baseball games, and he sits close, like, to where it costs a decent amount of money. True. I would love to like that conversation. Same, but maybe one day, but we'll see. No, definitely. It's not maybe. It's definitely. Yeah. Like, just imagine this. Like, me and him are both in a creator class and we're at a World Series, and we're in the suite like everyone else was that was in this year's creator class. And we just sit and talk about baseball for 45 minutes. Yeah. Like... It's, it's, that's the life, man. It is. It's the baseball lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And about that, what do you have to say to people that, like, Want to consider maybe joining it? Joining baseball lifestyle. You mean like the ambassador program? Yeah, the ambassador program. Um, if you definitely have interest in baseball lifestyle or any brand that you like to wear or or you support your social media accounts, definitely try to apply to the application at ambassador program and, to, and do the application. Um, they do have a decent amount of ambassadors. I know, so, like, it's funny because half of, like, the MLB creators are baseball lifestyle ambassadors. And, like, baseball dad, baseball lifestyle, R, um, RB Ira is baseball lifestyle, Jackson's baseball lifestyle, um, and they were baseball lifestyle before MLB creator class, which is kind of cool. So, like, when, when I saw half of them go into MLB creator class, oh, Trevor is a baseball lifestyle. Um, yeah, so it's just awesome to see them doing their thing. So I just think BL is, it re really represents, like, the actual lifestyle of a baseball player. Like, the clothing, the, the, what it represents on social media. Uh, the content they put out is, is just, so, like, elite. It's just elite, to be honest. Um, so if you guys are interested in, in applying, definitely try to, I think they have it on their, on their website or their link in their bio. Um, trying to apply to the ambassador program, you can't um, just keep trying and or reach out to them. I don't, I don't, they kind of, it's kind of a different process for me. They kind of reached out to me. Um, 
to, to do it. But if you're interested, always I always tell everybody to take action and just try. But if anyone wants to use the lifestyle, go buy some stuff. Christmas is coming up. You know, you use discount code Coach Perry fifteen. You lock it up with the discount, and then you're set. And you support you support a homie. And for everyone watching, how much percent do you get off with that discount? Fifty. 15%. Coach Perry, 15 You get 15% off the entire order. Can't beat it. No, you can't. Go. No, can't beat that. If you are looking to buy anything this holiday season from Baseball Lifestyle, go do it and go use Coach Perry's code. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, and their stuff's awesome. I have so much of their gear. Yeah, I, I might try and do something for them coming up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely try. Or hit them up. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably talk to them soon about some stuff, so we'll see. Yeah. They're good. They're good people. I know. Uh, let me think of some more stuff. All right, so you cool, you cool if I screenshot this and I can put it on my story. Like before, I'll, I'll put it on my story just like so I be on the lookout for the YouTube video coming out. Uh, yeah, we're still. When do you post this? Um, for everyone that's new to the channel, because we're still on. Um, we're posting Saturdays and Tuesdays now. We were doing Saturdays only, yeah. but we're starting to do it Saturdays and Tuesdays. So. Off season, more talking to the fans. That's that's how you roll. Here, hey, get on the camera real quick. I'll screenshot. If you could, I know you're recording. Yeah. What? What oh, you I want me to? Oh no. Oh, uh, sorry. I I just I just want it out. Here we go. I'm ready. All right. So, do you think the Yankees can go on a run next year and? Challenge my Braves in the World Series. No. No, and, I don't. I don't think Yankees make the playoffs again. And what makes it's you... A, it's, I hate to say it, dude. I just, I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't know. They First of all, they get, first of all, it starts with re-signing Rizzo and re-signing Gallo. But I even then... Rizzo a lot. I think he's a great clubhouse guy too. I don't. I don't. But then again, I don't know what to do with Luke Boyd. It's like Luke Boyd, you got to pay the dude. He got. He's got to be on the program. Um, I hate. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I don't want to hate. But I don't like Gallo. So, and I don't think Jacob Engel pitching. Yeah. All this stuff we're gonna come back healthy. The rookies come back good. Thank God they get rid of Haney. Um, but and they did. He went to the Dodgers. One guy, Gary Cole, so you gotta have other guys. Yeah, I feel like if the Yankees really want to truly make a run, they gotta go. They gotta sign some left-handed hitters, and they gotta go sign one ace and a couple relievers. I feel yeah. like. Yeah, no, I'm, I agree. I agree. One team that everyone's talking about that's going around, and they made a huge signing today is the Detroit Tigers. Well, not huge, but a signing I think could be huge for them. Yeah. They got uh, Eddie uh, Rodriguez, right? Yeah. That's a good piece. It's a good piece of their uh, rotation. I don't even know who their rotation is. I mean, they got... They still have Matt Boyd, I think. They have... Spencer Turnbull. Turnbull. Who's that rookie? Oh, Casey Mize. And then I guess Rodriguez. Who's the other guy? Some random. Derek Screwball, I think. Tarek oh, Tariq, Scru Tar Tariq Screwball. Yeah. Screwball. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that's not a bad rotation, actually. Yeah, I mean, they still need a lot of players. They don't have depth at all. And I, I don't know if Miguel Cabrera is retiring. He, it's coming up for him, but I don't think he's out yeah, just yet. It's not this year, right? Yeah, not this year. 
Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about the catcher's position in some retirements. They're going around is Molina retiring next after the season. How do you feel about that? Because Yadier Molina is so in inspirational, if you could put it like that. And yeah, I think um, I'm re- I'm re- watching Yadier when I was younger, so I've I've always been a fan of Yadier. Um, his swagger is he's just he's just so good at a catcher, and I would love um, to be a pitcher to throw to him because he saved so many. So many calls, he gets so many strike calls, blocks everything, throws guys out. Like he's the best defensive catcher that's that's been around the game in a while. I think like the Yachty's the best one, like no doubt. But I think to if we're going like second catcher, but kind of far away from, from Yachty, would be Tucker Barnhart. Like he Tucker Barnhart is the Yachty arena of this decade. Like, Tucker Barnhart is legit with that, like, defensively. Uh, and Yadik hit a little bit. Like, it wasn't crazy. I hit him, but he was, he hit good. He hit, I think he hit average. Like, I think he hit below 300 his career. Like, like 270s. I'm, like, I can, completely, I can be completely wrong. Blew it up. And then, and then the other catcher um, with Posey, that's just, I don't, I don't understand. It's probably, like, a family reason because how do you retire after, after a season like that he just had? Yeah, and he's only 34. He's got at least maybe three years left in him, if not more. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's like a family thing or or something where... Oh, so here, so Yachty batted 280 his career. So that's not bad, and he's been pretty no, solid. Not at all for a catcher, dude. He, he was a nine-time gold glove and a four-time platinum glove, two World Series, Silver Slugger, and ten, ten-time All-Star. Like, that's just like... He's a Hall of Famer. That's the crazy, That's legit, dude. It's a crazy thing, and those Cardinals teams ten years ago, they were fun to watch. Mhm. Mhm. I mean, you got Albert Pujols, Buster Posey, yeah, I mean, or not Buster Posey, Yadier Molina, and then you got David Freeze, who used to be good. Oh my God! Yeah, dude, I remember that. To the Wayne Wright was in his prime. So long ago. Was. How old were you, dude? Like five? Yeah, I was like, yeah, like four or five. Yeah. I actually went to St. Louis, and there's a restaurant. In the restaurant, they have like the scoreboard from that game, like the exact scoreboard, like from Game Six of the World Series, 2011. That was that was pretty awesome to see. That stadium is beautiful. I've never, I've never been. It is. I went in June when um they played the Pirates, and it was pretty awesome. It was pretty nice stadium, and for how long it's been around for, it's pretty awesome. It's still that awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Well, we got going in Atlanta right now. That's that's gonna be another one like Bush Stadium. I think so, yeah. Maybe even better because uh, you're biased. I'm not bu No, like the stadium, not Yeah. Like literally I know it's crazy, but literally if we didn't have the battery, I don't know what our stadium would be. I wanted to. I've only been allowed to play there. Like, everything around the stadium is pretty awesome. Like, the battery, and they do these watch parties that I've told you about that I've been able to go to. Like, they have this AstroTurf area, literally right outside the Chop House Gate, which is a restaurant inside the stadium. And so, people just go out, they watch games, and out there during the postseason, it's kind of awesome. Uh, it looks like it looks a lot of fun every time you have to watch party. I, I watched a couple of your videos like that. Who's that one guy 
that um, is always there and you like you hang out with. So a lot of people ask me this. There's a Braves in-game host, like you know how every team has an in-game host who does stuff on the big board. That's what he does, and oh, okay. we've kind of turned into good friends. And it literally all started by me deciding to go up to him before a Braves game back in August. We played the Giants, and I just said, hey, let me go check this dude out. He looks pretty dope. So I went up there. I checked him out. I did it. I did the TikTok video with him. And then in LCS, Dodgers game three, I go back up there. I say, hey, what's up, man? And we hang out. We're talking when he's not doing stuff a lot that game. And it's just all taken off from there. Mark Owens. Um, Mark Owens. Yeah, he has an Instagram if y'all want to go follow it. Mark Owens on Instagram. I think he has a Facebook, too. I don't know how many of y'all use Facebook. I, I have it, but I barely look at it. Yeah. All right. I think we've covered a lot of stuff, and I think we're, we're going to end it right here. I feel like this is a good spot to end. And again, I appreciate you having me on. I, I hope we get some feedback and comments from it. A lot of love. Um, I'll make sure I'll repost it. And whenever you uh, send me some stuff with the links and stuff like that, I'll make sure to post it. Um, All right. Yeah, and again, I, I appreciate you, man. I, I, I commend you for doing this. And I think uh, you got you got a bright future with not playing baseball, but definitely creating content for it. So definitely keep doing what you're doing. I am. I'm definitely going to keep this keep up this content and it's awesome to yeah. do it day to day basis. So. Yeah. 100%. so yeah. Perry, peace out. Also keep up what you're doing as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Really, I do. All right. Peace out guys.